ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटर नंबर वन ओह सॉरी एट चैप्टर नंबर वन and text number 14 atha grer saya hak karman atra kaya saya karman ihante karma hetava ihamano hi purushah prayo niham prapadyate Atah, therefore, agreeing in the beginning, Rishayaha, all learned rishis, saintly persons, karmani, fruitive activities, ihante, execute, a karma, freedom from fruitive results. Hetave for the purpose of Ihamanaha engaging in such activities. He indeed Purushaha a person. Prayaha almost always. Aniham liberation from karma. Prabhadyate attains translation and purport by Mr. Vain Gai Seshi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Translation Therefore, to enable people to reach the stage of activities that are not tinged by fruitive results Great saints first engage people in fruitive activities For unless one begins by performing activities as recommended in the Shastra one cannot reach the stage of liberation or activities that produce no reactions purport in bhagavad gita lord krishna advises ignartat karmano nyatra lokoyam karma bandhana work done as a sacrifice for vishnu has to be performed otherwise Work binds one to this material world. Generally, everyone is attracted to hard labor for becoming happy in this material world. But although various activities are going on all over the world simply for the sake of happiness, unfortunately, only problems are being created from such activities. Therefore, it is advised that active person engage in activities of Krishna consciousness which are called yajna because then they will gradually come to the platform of devotional service yajna means Lord Vishnu the yajna purush the enjoyer of all sacrifices bhoktaram yajna tapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram the Supreme Personality of Godhead is actually the enjoyer and therefore if we begin our activities for His satisfaction we will gradually lose our taste for material activities. Sutta Goswami declared to the great assembly of sages at Naimisharanya Adhapambe Dvijashreshta Varnashramaha Vibhagasaha Svanistasya dharmasya samsiddhir haritoshanam O best among the twice born, it is concluded that the highest perfection one can achieve by discharging his prescribed duties according to caste, division and orders of life is to please the Lord Hari. According to Vedic principles, everyone must act according to his classification as Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. 
Brahmachari, Grahastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyasi, everyone should progress toward perfection by acting in such a way that Krishna will be pleased. Samsidhir Haridoshanam. One cannot please Krishna by sitting idly. One must act according to the directions of the spiritual master for the sake of pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then one will gradually come to the stage of pure devotional service as recommended, as confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam. Naishkarmyam api achut achutya bhava varshitam nashobate jnanam alam nirjanam niranjanam Knowledge of self-realization, even though freed from all material affinity, does not look well if devoid of conception of infallible God. Jnanis recommend that one adapt Naishkarmya by not doing anything but simply meditating and thinking of Brahman. But this is impossible unless one realizes Parabrahma, Krishna. If there is no Krishna consciousness, any kind of activity, be it philanthropic, political or social, simply causes karma bandhana, bondage to material world. As long as one is entangled in karma bandhan, one must accept different types of bodies that spoils the human form of facility. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, karma yoga is recommended. Arakshor munir yodham karma karanam uchyate yoga rudasya dasyaiva samaha karanam uchyate For one who is a neophyte in that yoga system, work is said to be the means. For one who has already attained to yoga, cessation of all material activities is said to be the means. Nonetheless, karmaindriya samyamya Yasate manasas maran indriyartan vimudatma mithyachara sabuchate. One who restrains the senses and organs of action, but whose mind dwells on sense objects, certainly deludes himself and he is called a pretender. One should act for Krishna very seriously in order to become fully Krishna conscious and should not sit down to imitate such great personalities as Haridas Thakur. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur condemned such imitation. He said, Dushtamana, Tumiki Shera Vaishnava, Pratistara Thare Nirjana Regrahe, Tava Harinama Kevala Kaitava. My dear mind, what kind of a devotee are you? Simply for cheap adoration, you sit in a solitary place and pretend to chant Hare Krishna mantra. But this is all cheating. Recently at Mayapur, an African devotee wanted to imitate Haridas Thakur, but after 15 days, he became restless and went away. Do not suddenly try to imitate Haridas Thakur. Engage yourself in Krishna conscious activities, and gradually you will come to the stage of liberation. Mukti Hidvan Yatarupam Swarupena Vivastiti. Oh my Jnana Timrandasya, Jnana Jnana Salakriya, Chakshuram Militamena, Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasa, Ebutale, Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharini, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Pasha Tade Satarini, Chai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Galadara Shivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Rama Hare Hare <coughs> So in this shloka, <coughs> in the beginning, in the translation it is said that to enable people to reach the stage of activities uh, are not tinged by f that are not tinged by fruity activities, great saints first engage people in fruity activities. Sometimes we see in the you know in the schools, colleges, preachers. Uh, when we do the school preaching, college preaching, 
you know, we, I used to bring students uh, many years ago and uh, we give a nice lecture, nice kirtan, nice prashadam. And students, they all think that such a nice life. <laughs> you are giving gulab jamun, <laughs> you are giving nice uh, plate of prashadam and you yourself serve, you cook and you serve us, we don't do anything. And then later on when they join the movement, we have tons of service for them. <laughs> you know, you send them to go cook, you send them go collect grains, you send them collect funds. And uh, like we were doing. So in the beginning sometimes people they uh, think that life in Krishna consciousness is, is no activity and is just enjoy life. But it's uh, a little different. And Prabhupada also told a story to a devotee that um, a man once told his friend about the sugar can. And you know, it tastes nice and it is very sweet when you chew it up. And the other friend who was hearing about the sugar can actually didn't know about the sugar can. And he was th giving an analogy to that friend. So he said that sugar can is like a bamboo. You know, it's like a green and it's like thin and it's tall. And, uh, and uh, that friend, he began to chew a different kinds of bamboo. And he could never taste the sweetness. And Prabhupada gives the analogy that in this material world, um, materialists are trying to find happiness through the body. Everyone has a body and everyone seeks to take pleasure from the body. So they try very hard to seek pleasure from the body. And Prabhupada says that, you know, the pleasure experienced by the material body is like a lightning. It's just like for a, only for a few seconds and then suddenly it disappears. It's just like that. Uh, the body which we seek pleasure from the material, pleasure which we seek from the material body. And uh, whereas the real happiness is like the sun which blazes in the sky always and it illuminates everything. The spiritual happiness is like, like a sun which illuminates everything. So the tendency to enjoy happiness is there. So that cannot be avoided. So either this way or that way, uh, the soul will seek pleasure, such chit and ananda. And Prabhupada also gives an example um, that uh, the human form of life is not to, uh, meant to work hard. Actually, in the beginning, we see that in the human form of life is meant to work hard in the medieval world because every institution, every college, or every organization or any company industrial or maybe you say the communist country the whole idea is to work hard you know uh, put all your energy intelligence and uh, heart to success be successful and work harder and Prabhupada gives an example it's just an ass mentality the schools and colleges or any institution those who teach people to work hard is nothing but they're making people to become an ass and develop a mentality of an ass just for no reason. Because Prabhupada said, food for the human beings are available anywhere and human beings are capable enough to make their own house. Uh, they are capable enough to own a little food and they live a sufficient without any, anyone's uh, dependence. But unnecessarily, uh, we see that in the modern world, people are educating uh, to others to become work harder. Once, uh, uh, Prabhupada said that we should utilize full time our, for Krishna consciousness and uh, that every man should be uh, transferred to Golaku Vrindavan in this life itself. Uh, Prabhupada, it's, it's Prabhupada's wish and he preached like that. And also once uh, in, in South Africa, one uh, Indian man asked Srila Prabhupada in Johannesburg. He said that, uh, do, don't you think people in this country are lazy? And Prabhupada said that, uh, to become lazy is the recommendation of the Shastra. 
that one should become a lazy person. That Prabhupada also tells that lazy person has become a bad word, but the actual real life means not work very hard and become a lazy man. Working hard is meant for animals and uh, not for human beings. The human beings should not be working hard. They should be very peaceful. They should be cultivating uh, uh, knowledge and they live a Krishna conscious life. This is meant for human life. The humans should use their intelligence how to work very less. This is the purpose of a human body. And therefore, those who uh, we also see in this material world, the people, they build a nice bungalow, and they go to the farm, they make a, in seclusion, they make nice place just to live a lazy person, you know, free from this world. So much chaos going on everywhere. You know, we need peace. We need to go in the farm and live a peaceful life. Purpose of this, humans are like that. So we, sh we should cultivate it. And further, Prabhupada also says that perfection of life means ultimately to become lazy. That is perfection. Otherwise, why people they should make a separate cottage and live in a separate bungalow and they want to be in seclusion. This is the human nature to become a lazy. Um, otherwise, why go outside the city at the weekends? They are looking for the weekends, right? Saturday, Sunday. They work so hard, uh, looking for the Saturday, Sunday weekends to live a peaceful life. You know, go with the family and live with the peace them. Eat, eat nicely and have a good life, have a good time. <laughs> you know, in the, you know in, the, in the Western countries, every time they are looking for some entertainment. You know, in the Polish tour, in the everyday evening hours, thousand people they come. They look and watch drama. You know, they eat all the food from the restaurant. They have a good time. They bring all their children, hundreds of children they come. Uh, along with their family, they have a good time. And uh, nice being, uh, you know, nice. They wanted to enjoy the time, being in humor, uh, being in love, and being in affection and friendship. This is human. Um, that's why Prabhupada said, the human life is meant to be lazy and enjoy life in a Krishna conscious way. And further, in, uh, one devotee shares his memory named uh, Nishchintya Das, Prabhupada disciple. When Prabhupada asked him about the farm, he said the devotees used to have farm in islands. And Prabhupada asked him, what grows here easily? And the devotee said, uh, actually, Prabhupada, we can grow cauliflower and broccoli and potato and this and that and so many things. And Prabhupada they told him, no, 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 no. You just tell me what grows very easily. And he said, well, corn, we can grow corn and we can grow nice goas, very easily, no hard work. And Prabhupada said, very good. We will have goa juice in the morning breakfast and for the lunch, we have corn chapatis. The business is finished. No more working hard. The rest of the time, the devotees, they should chant, read and remember Krishna. And this is what it meant for. And uh, uh, this is the proper mood was. It's not that you grow tons of things, you spend all your time in that and you don't chant. <laughs> it's a, the whole purpose of the farm is to live a simple life and uh, less work and more preaching and more remembering and more using the human form of life to spend it for Krishna. And Prabhupada also said one has to become Atma Rama, uh, knowing the signs of Atma Tattva and doing the business of the Atma Tattva. And Prabhupada said that uh, this is uh, like the Goswamis in Vrindavan. Uh, Prabhupada gives an example that the Goswamis were very opulent ministers, but they were not happy. Uh, just yesterday, Dharmat Mahabhu made a minister. <laughs> like every day we see people in different world, in different parts of the country, a lot of ministers, a lot of actors, celebrities, and people end up being unhappy in the life. And ultimately what they do, they renounce. Uh, 
we see one uh, one of the famous person in Vrindavan who came all the way from Bengal. His name was Lal Babu. He was a big zamindar, a big landlord. He was having a lot of money and uh, so much opulence, but he didn't become happy. Uh, one day, one one laundry woman, she said, "The day is beginning and life is finishing." And we just he just heard that uh, statement. And the day comes to an end, your life is also going to end. Every day and in the every night, your life is finishing. Immediately, there was, he sensed some kind of renunciation that maybe I should renounce. You know, life is coming to an end. Uh, when the day ends, your life is also ending. So immediately, what did he do? He gave up all the opulence. He started distributing. Uh, if you go downtown Loi Bazaar, there is a temple. Uh, near the Brahmakund. He, he, he built the temple, Lal Babu Mandir. A very famous temple in Vrindavan. He came all the way to Vrindavan. He gave everything. He found that by giving up everything, he became happy. Uh, and we also see here, people, the more and more you accumulate, the more and more you become, it becomes a burden for you. And the more and more you give, you become charitable, you give it for others, it becomes like a tree. Uh, being beneficial for others and become like a cloud. You accumulated so much, now it's time to give it to others. Uh, and uh, like you know, Krishna also tells to Udo that uh, the saint is like a son, that he accumulates all the water from the land, he accumulates water from the sea, he accumulates water from the lake and then later what he does? He distributes to everyone. And this is one of the quality of a renounced order of life, the uh, quality in which we have. So proper said that this is called, that this is how a person becomes Atmaram, becomes satisfied. Uh, by giving up all the name, fame, opulence and engaging in uh, Krishna's service. Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami actually, they were ministers. They came here to Vrindavan and they became beggars. <laughs> and they found the highest happiness in life by becoming a beggar. Uh, I think, um, uh, yeah. And uh, Prabhupada says that by for doing good to others, they accepted the renounced order of life. This should be the intention uh, behind your renunciation. Uh, once, uh, you know, uh, Burjan Prabhu, I think many years ago, six, seven years ago, he also quoted that Bhav Rupa Goswami, that they were working as ministers of Navabhujain Shah and uh, they considered themselves that they were so fallen that they were working under a militia, a meat eater and uh, but when they came to Vrindavan they took a humble mood and uh, uh, they were not even accepting the clothes you know, uh, new clothes it's already a lion cloth, it's a toned cloth. Uh, it's like what do you call this? A lungi, some kind of a lungi thing. And they were taking the clothes that which has been used and thrown. He was even given an example that uh, that dead body, you know, in the cremation, the people used to take that cloth and throw it on the other side. And no one touches that cloth. But Goswamis, they used to take all those clothes, wash it in Yamuna, and they wear it. They were not accepting even some uh, kind of fresh new, old and torn completely. See, that's why it says lion coats and torn quilts. They considered themselves so fallen and uh, they took the so humble mood. They were not even accepting uh, a fresh ones. It's old clothes which has been thrown from the cremation. It's dead bodies clothes. Who will accept it? But they accepted the mood of humility that uh, they accept, just like you see in all other Goswamis also, Rupa Goswami, Raghunadas Goswami, they all accepted the same mood. Raghunadas Goswami used to take the food from the Nali, which has been, which even the cows they don't eat, smells bad. He took that, dry it and eat it and doing bhajan. This was the Goswami's mood. And uh, they were all thinking how to do benefit others, just like 
Duru Maharaj and uh, Prahlad Maharaj and they were completely satisfied and Prabhupada said that this is called Atmarama in all conditions a devotee is satisfied and his intention is always thinking about others how to benefit he's so anxious because people are suffering he cannot bear it and Prabhupada also was uh, we see from the history that Prabhupada revived the whole spiritual life, the whole India. After Srila Prabhupada, uh, you know, started the organization, the whole India got revived. In all the temples in India, we see even, you know, in the Polish tour, we see, I was there for 40 days. We are preaching, looking at us, even the Christians, they come and preach. <laughs> they come and preach about the Bible. And they have a tent next to our Hare Krishna tent. They also preach, you know, how to be a nice person, <laughs> you know, how to be Jesus conscious, which is good. Uh, and in this way, we see that Prabhupada has revived the uh, spiritual life, the whole world actually. We even see the other sampradayas are imitating uh, ISKCON. People in Madhva Sampradaya also, people started, you know, actively preaching about uh, Madhva philosophy. Uh, it has, it's gone as Prabhupada has made his society of an ideal society, ideal spiritual uh, culture, which is to be taken from us. And uh, <coughs> Prabhupada also often used to say that I, when I used to sit in Radha Damodar temple, every day I used to look at uh, Srila Rupa Goswami Samadhi. Uh, and he used to say, I chant every day, I meditate, and then I translate my books. And then uh, I read. And then he, he often used to also say that Rupa Goswami, actually he inspired me to go to West and preach. You know, after taking sannyas, and you always should be thinking how to benefit others. Make others happy. Make others' life happy. Make others uh, be Krishna conscious. And Prabhupada said that he inspired me. I was sitting and chanting. He inspired me to go to the West. And then you should preach all over the Western country. Um, like, you know, Indra Dumna Maharaj in his Polish tour, uh, we have every day a schedule that uh, every day we go for Harinam from morning 10 to uh, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. When Maharaj comes, it is even more, four hours. <laughs> it's non stop walking, non stop kirtan, and non stop. You know, paraphernalia, what do you call the pamphlet distribution, and meeting people. And right after that, when you come to Pandal, and immediately the devotees uh, get busy with uh, making prasadam, the theater, and in the evening, 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock, non stop, 5 hours uh, cultural program. Every day, every day except Monday. Every day, 6 days a week. Every single day, for uh, at least two months. Huh? <laughs> huh? He's still doing it. Yeah, he's doing it for like 30 plus years, huh? non stop. And this is Sanyas, and this is called uh, a renounced order of life. He's, he's 70 years old, he's non stop. And plus, in the evening he comes immediately, he meets people. In the morning we have Bhagavatam class. It's like everybody's super tired, and still devotees are working hard. And this is the mood uh, of a Krishna conscious devotee. We see in one sense, Sri Prabhupada says that to become a lazy person is the ultimate goal of life. And on the other side, Prabhupada also uh, sets an example that he wakes up at 2 o'clock and he translates books, he preaches and meets people and educates everyone in response to all the letters which he gets. And further, I would also like to share <coughs> that... Um, <coughs> Because he has told something about karma. Uh, Prabhupada also said, when devotional service, without chanting, it also can become a karma. When devotee keeps doing service, but not chanting his rounds. And Prabhupada, meant, Prabhupada said that in other words, his activities become karmic. Along with the uh, devotional service, the devotee also have to vibrate the holy name and chant every day the prescribed number of rounds as Srila Prabhupada has told and uh, <clears throat> Prabhupada also said that once you got initiation 
and immediately all your karma will be stopped. Once Prabhupada has been asked this question, and Prabhupada gives the example that just like an electric fan, it's rotating. But initiation is like unplugging the plug. You get unplugged, but still it has some effect. It keeps rotating. But after some time, it will stop. But there is really no more karma. And Prabhupada also expected that uh, he wanted to create an army of sannyasis. That was his desire. He even wrote a letter that all my grass, the disciples should take sannyas. At a certain point of age, at least uh, officially, if not officially, they should live a life like a sannyasis. The mood, the attitude, and the behavior, and everything should uh, become like a sannyasis. At one point, the all the grass devotees. He expected actually that everyone must take sannyas. And he said that it's nothing wonder because in India, anyway, uh, you know, the four ashram is meant for the human life. Brahmacharya, Grast, Vanapras, and Sanyas. And every human being has to undergo this. And Prabhupada really expressed that, I would like to make an army. I want an army of Sanyasis. Go around the world and capture everyone and uh, flood, flood this world in Krishna Kanji's life. And that's his, uh, actually his desire. And the human form of love is meant for self-realization. It says that in a shloka that etre me sada sudrupe prati siddhe svasam vidha avidhyayatmi krite iti thad brahma darshanam Whenever a person experiences by self-realization that both the gross and the subtle bodies have nothing to do with the matter, have, have nothing to do with the pure self. At that time, he sees himself as well as the Lord. When you become selfless, you see Krishna which is sitting inside your heart. And not only that, you see Krishna everywhere, sitting in everyone's heart. And you can understand that you are a self-realized soul. And, and it says that you personally experience uh, by self-realization. Uh, let's see. I think I will stop here. Uh, if you have any question, answers, we can discuss any comments, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> it's working. <laughs> and uh, our brahmacharis, they are doing pretty good in that. <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you said that by spiritual life, one becomes very happy, but I'm not happy. So do you recommend for me, I work harder or I can't work? What is your recommendation? You know, what is the formula for becoming happy? <clears throat> <laughs> You know everything. <laughs> anyway, uh, in the tour, I will share the tour experience that, uh, you know, with like 400 devotees every day, like 200 devotees, we are going for Harinam. And four hours, we were walking, walking, walking. And in the Rudumna Maharaj, he said that, look at these happy faces. <laughs> how, how anyone can be like them? Uh, so, Krishna conscious process, it's like, um, uh, it's by nature it's, it's, uh, makes one happy but I know you were asking question for others benefit it's not for you <laughs> otherwise how you can smile well, you know I know people in the school colleges uh, neighbors they never smile for years you know they never laughed for decades you know even my own family friends even we, when we meet together they, they never smile. They, I never felt, I never see uh, them like the devotees, you know, they have a lot. They have a, a smile in their faces. Prabhupada made a comment.
quote that a gentleman should be humorous. It's proper saying that, you know, it's not like uh, being eccentric, but being humorous. It's the nature of a gentleman. The proper is always was humorous and making others happy. Uh, Krishna Consciousness life, uh, by nature it makes you happy if we chant and associate with Krishna through his holy name and take prasadam. It purifies you from the sense of objects which depressing you. You know, like the form, the sound, the taste, the smell and the touch. All these sense objects, when the sense, the working senses and the knowledge and caring senses, when it comes together, it, it, it creates. You know, the moment it comes together, it creates depression, it creates frustration, it creates unhappiness. Uh, just like we see in the Bhagavad Gita that the, the, all the happiness, unhappiness is due to only one cause that, you know, you, you, you are trying to exploit the material nature. You know, the moment you become aloof from it, immediately feel the sense of spiritual happiness. Just like, you know, this uh, Lal Babu, he was not happy. He was, he was so attached to his money, his opulence and everything. And he sensed renunciation. Ah, wonderful. Giving up everything for others. Beautiful. <laughs> and the other day also I made an example that one of, one of the famous movie star, you know, Jackie Chan, he said that, you know, I had a Rolex watch when I was a kid, embedded with uh, diamonds. And I had the Bentley, uh, the best of the cars. When I was very young age, I got tons of girlfriends and I was a young age too. But uh, he, he himself said that none of the objects made me happy. So, you know, what I did, I, f I started finding the chari charitable society. I went there, I started giving things. And then Jackie said that it made me happy. Then I made, it, I made that as my hobby. Then, you know, I go every time, I collect funds, I give it to others. And he said, I am a happy person I am. I feel the sense of happiness. So the more we give others, it uh, makes us happy. It's, this is what uh, Prabhupada's uh, idea too, that you accumulate like a sun and give like a cloud. So it, it, for sure this will work. And I think I answered your question. <laughs> yes? Uh, we have every Sunday youth program in the Balaram Hall. You should join them. Then we have a nice answer for you there. Because there are people who wants to enjoy the fruits as well as do some service. Like you know, uh, you spend a lot of time in the moment and you have some realizations, you're chanting japa and you know everything is transcendental. But for the neophyte stage, for people some, they don't know but they wanted to enjoy some fruits. They have some attachment. So it is recommended that, uh, that in the, you engage them, like akama sarva kama moksha kama va tivirena bhakti ena yajate ena purushum param. That even in Bhagavatam says that, doesn't matter whether you have kama vasana, or whether you have no kama vasana, but engage in devotional service. So for the neophyte people, 
we try to engage them, somehow or other uh, link them towards Krishna. It's, it's, it's a right? Yeah. So Srila Prabhupada also uh, said that, you know, they wanted to work in the factories. And Prabhupada accepted that you work and uh, make them Krishna consciousness. Wherever you work, you preach also. Some, sometimes devotees say, couldn't accompany, uh, you say, uh, cope up with others. So he, he said, you work in the place where you are and uh, try to preach the message. So we may say that's a neophyte mentality that you can't work with others, but at the same time you need to have an option too. So we have an option. You, you preach wherever you're comfortable, you preach from there. So in the neophyte stage, ultimately Prabhupada also said that you should take sannyas. All the grasas, they should take sannyas. This is Prabhupada's letter I just uh, read on the other day. If you can't take sannyas, at least you should live like a uh, sannyasi life. At one point, you become, uh, you know, give up everything, fully Krishna conscious for, to spread the message and helping the movement. Or, you know, not like the young couples. <laughs> Prabhupada in the morning also, Sanak Sanatham read that even, you know, if you are not chanting properly, still chanting has its benefit. Prabhupada also said, but still, attending chanting, it gives you uh, a result faster. So, Prabhupada ultimately wanted to be, all, all of us to be attentive. And, uh, you are struggling, that's okay, but you should uh, come up to the level of being, uh, just like in the nectar of instruction, Bhakti Siddhanta says that the beginning stage, fully attentive of Hare Krishna mantra, smarana vasta, uh, and then uh, you become fully absorbed in Krishna's name without even one single distraction, uh, that's the first step. And then further you go, Nama Rupa Guna Leela. Then that chanting gives you result. Attentive chanting gives you further results. The, when you read all these things, you should become serious then. We can't be, you know, whole life struggling with one problem. You should become more serious. You should uh, become more attentive. You work hard, endeavor. has to be some more effort. Uh, you cannot be depressed uh, just like, uh, you know, you, you should be further, you should build up your determination and then you make a further more good steps to make a progress. Uh, it, it is also said that, Prabhupada said that like uh, a devotee is like a, a fire, blazing fire, that karma will cannot act on him. Because the, although the iron rod is in the fire, it becomes like a fire. So the more you become serious, and Krishna, you become Krishnaized. So Prabhupada said, you become totally like Krishna, that uh, in qualities, that you cannot be touched by any other impurities. That, that's, that's perfection. That, uh, and also, whoever comes in contact with you, they also become like you. And uh, it is said that Udo Gita, Krishna tells to uh, uh, Udo that, that you should accept the quality of this Avanti Brahman. That just like a water, you know, he remains pure. And uh, whoever comes in touch with him, they also become pure. And be like a wind, just like aloof. You travel everywhere, you preach all over the world, but be like a wind. Uh, and be like the sun. You accumulate everyone's property and give it back to others. So one has to work a little bit harder and chant more nicely so that Krishna becomes happy. So ultimately it is said that Samsidhir Haritoshanam to it's all to please Krishna, to make Krishna happy. You preach, you do your service to, to see Krishna smile. <laughs> 
I think Krishna and Balaram, they have smiling face always. But uh, they, that's the mood and intention of everything. You know, you take sannyas, you remain brahmachari, whatever. It's all the intention behind that is to make Krishna happy. Then if you have that intention, you are success. Your life is success. Yeah, Prabhupada said that they wanted to grow this in the farm, that in the farm. Prabhupada said, no, no, no. What can grow without any hard work? <laughs> I was also shocked to reading this. And Prabhupada said, grow only that. And eat and chant more. That's the purpose of the farm. To become fully Krishna and uh, become an associate of Krishna. It's not that, you know, you become a, a big advertisement and you spend all your time in that and you get lost not becoming Krishna consciousness. And you become attached to that. Oh, this is me, that is mine. So you, you lost the point. Because otherwise, already there are uh, like thousands of organizations that are doing it organic farming, organic this, and everything organic. There is no Krishna conscious life. So, of course, we need varieties. So, but we don't we have to. The idea is don't get lost in that. The idea is to you know, though have the farm is to become conscious of Krishna. That, uh, that you realize that you are self and uh, become a one of associate of Krishna and go back to Krishna. Prabhupada even says that you should go to Golakurindavan in this life. Prabhupada emphasizes that, you know, there's no point in spending your life here, life after life after life here. That's the conscious behind every activity actually. You be this leader, you be uh, that service, whatever it may be, that you are conscious of Krishna. Hare Krishna.